companies will pay you to hack them and you can register as a hacker on platforms such as bugbounty.com and hackerone.com to begin submitting vulnerabilities that you discover on the websites listed there. So in this video we'll go over some tools that hackers use to find hidden secrets that exist within websites. First we'll start off with Subfinder. It is a subdomain enumeration tool that maps out the target's infrastructure by finding all associated subdomains. This helps bug hunters to broaden the attack surface. And you can simply install it using Goland or Go language which is created by Google. I will include all links in the description of this video. And also if you are facing any issues, any type of issue installing these tools, please let me know down in the comments and I will help you out. Now let's see how Subfinder works. Once you have it installed, we can simply do subfinder from the terminal dash D and give it the target domain. And this is the simplest way to run subfinder. Hit enter. And as you can see, here we have all of the subdomains that exist within example.com. So it works by collecting data from multiple sources like public DNS records, databases, passive DNS services, and APIs like Shodin API, for example. And as you can see, we have a huge list and we can actually tell it to store the output of this command and put it in a file called, for example, example SD or subdomains. So in this command, we are using subfinder, specifying the target domain, and we are piping the output into another tool called T, which allows us to store into a file and output to the terminal at the same time. So if I hit enter, we should see the output as well, and it will store the output into example underscore SD. And cool, we got the output. So now we have the subdomains stored in this file, example underscore SD. We can now use another tool called HTTPX. And we use HTTPX to check which of the found subdomains are alive and gather quick information like status codes, headers, and SSL information. This tool helps with filtering out the inactive domains and identify the potential points of interest. And we can install it using the go command as well. And once you have it installed, let's try running it by doing HTTPX on the terminal. And as you can see, it's installed and ready to be used. And to start using HTTPX, we can simply do cat and give it the name of the file that we just generated. And we will pipe it into the tool HTTPX. And I will tell it to include the status code and the title of that domain. And finally, I will pipe the output into the T tool as well, into the T command and store the new file as example status. Let's hit enter. And this is just an example.com target, by the way, just to show you how the tools work. If you run these tools on other websites, legit websites, you will probably get a lot more information. And this will show us the active subdomains listed in the example subdomain file. And as you can see, 200 means it is active website and 300 means it is unreachable for some reason. And we can navigate to it. So right click it and click on open link. And here we can see the website. Another cool tool that we can utilize is called Katana. Katana crawls the target website and its subdomains for directories and files. It will also check for available subdirectories and exposed content. And you can download it using Go as well. All of these tools are by Project Discovery by the way. Now let's see how it works. The simplest way of running Katana is to add a URL using the U flag and give it the domain name. And these, and these JavaScript files are actually important because sometimes the developers of this website can hide APIs that could lead to website takeover or even have hard-coded data that could be beneficial for us. And we can actually run Katana on this exact JavaScript file. So the same way, we can do katana-u and give it the JavaScript URL. In this case, it didn't find anything useful, but in other scenarios, it could find something very useful for you when you are bug hunting. Another tool that we can use is called Dirt Search. Dirt Search basically brute forces directories and files on web applications. Its main job is to discover hidden admin panels, sensitive directories, and config files that are hidden. 
it uses a predefined word list to test if that directory or file exists on that web server. And it does that by sending HTTP request for each word list entry. So for each one of these, it would send a request and it will wait for a response from the server. And for example, if the HTTP response from the server is 200, then it will log that result in the output. And we can install it using multiple methods. For me, I installed it using git. So git clone and the URL. This is the recommended way to do it. And once you have it on your machine, we can just navigate to its directory using cd their search. And here we have the main Python file. And we can simply run it using sudo python3 their search.py u and give it the target URL. Let's hit enter. So here we have the status code for the given directory. So for example, the .env file got a 403 which is insufficient permissions. So that file does exist on the server, but we don't have enough permissions to view it. 404 basically means that directory does not exist in the server. And if you see 200 here, that means that file or directory is accessible by you. So you get the idea. I will cancel this and quit without saving. And let's move on to the other tool that we can use after finding directories and files, which is ent.ext. So we'll basically use ent.ext to find config files, scripts, or backup files that may be overlooked by either Katana or Dir Search. And to install it and run it, we would need to install Go as well and clone the repository. Once you have it cloned, simply navigate to it. And once you are here, let's do go run main.go, which is this script file. And we can either give it a list of JavaScript files using dash L and specify the file name that has the JavaScript file URLs or by using the dash U parameter. And after the dash U simply specify the target URL. Hit enter. And as you can see, we discovered some JavaScript files and a directory. So these files or endpoints could possibly have less security controls implemented on them. This would allow the attacker to access the server using that method. And finally, we got the last tool, Nuclei. Nuclei is a fast vulnerability scanner that uses templates to send requests to targets. This will minimize false positives. It also supports multiple protocols like TCP, DNS, HTTP, and much more. So what is special about Nuclei is that we are able to customize it and add our own definitions to the scan using YAML templates. And just like the previous tools, we can install it using the go command. And once you have it installed, you can run it from the terminal. And this is the simplest way to run it. Use the dash u parameter and give it the target URL. Let's hit enter and now we are scanning this web application with over 8500 templates. So this is a huge tool that can be extremely effective when customizing your scans using custom templates. It's already detected that we have HTTP missing security headers on this test domain. So in summary, we can use these awesome tools to find and report bugs and vulnerabilities by discovering hidden URLs and files that could lead us to a major discovery. Please let me know if you would like to see a live bug hunt on a live website in which we can use these tools that we discussed in this video on that live bug hunt. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more content like this one.